Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reverend Lance. Today, I want to talk about inflation. In this video, we are going to learn how to eliminate inflation, how to balance the budget, how to balance the economy, how to promote jobs, and you name it. Number one, the reason why we are experiencing inflation is not because of the war in Ukraine, nor are we experiencing inflation because of the coronavirus. We are experiencing inflation because of free spending. The moment we eliminate free spending and put a price cap on the economy and, the, and spending, then we will eliminate inflation. Now, here's what it looks like. Number one, when you allow free spending, it the 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 rise of the crime will rise, prices go up, and inflation goes up. Uh, the value of a dollar goes down. Right now, because we have allowed free spending, the value of a dollar is at sixty cents. And if we continue to allow free spending the value of a dollar is going to eventually go down to zero and the, it, it will be useless uh, to have a dollar in your pocket because of free spending. Now, you would have to in, in for, put a place a price cap on spending and pricing and everything else in order to eliminate inflation. Now, with a price cap, you have two options, 60-40 and 50-50. But before I get into what those two options mean, I'm going to tell you that each individual needs a price cap on how much money he or she can make. In my opinion, that price cap should be $1 billion. A person's net worth should not exceed $1 billion. Otherwise, it leads to inflation. Now, with the price cap, if you choose 60-40, what that means is for every $100 that you make, $60 go to you, $40 go to your taxes, to the government. Uh, that's what the 60-40 with the 50-50, for every $100 that you make, you keep 50, you, uh, you give 50, pay 50 for taxes. That's how that works. Now, if, uh, now here's the difference between the two options. If you choose 60-40, uh, you don't get an income tax. But if you choose 50-50, you get a 10% income tax. That is how it should be across the board. I was always a history major. I studied um, <clears throat> the presidencies. I've studied the, uh, the economy. I studied the legal perspective. I studied everything. You name it, I studied it. And there were four presidents that came to mind that always placed a price cap on spending, which make, made their presidency successful. Number one, you got Andrew J Jackson. Number two, you got L Abraham Lincoln. Those were the two of the 19th century. The two of the 20th century were Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. They all four presidents had one thing in common which made their presidency successful is the fact that they placed a price cap on spending. Now, when you place a price cap on spending, $1 may feel like $20, $1,000 may feel like a million, $100 may feel like $1,000. So the value of a dollar goes up when you place a price cap on spending. 
if you continue to allow free spending, you're going to continue to allow the rise of prices in education, buying a home, uh, buying food and groceries and all and everything else. But if you place a price cap on everything, then you will, then everyone tuition, will, college tuition will be affordable. Everyone can get a college education if they so choose. I believe education is the ticket to success. But by endorsing free spending, we become a slave to the rich. The poor becomes a slave to the rich when we allow free spending. But when we uh, endorse a price cap, the, uh, the, the budget is balanced. Everyone is, e- is equal in what they make. And I believe that number should not exceed $1 billion. Because when you create a uh, free spending, you, it allows judges to set your bill at whatever they so choose, even if you can't afford it. And it, it, it allows the jails to be overcrowded with people, poor people who can't even afford to make bail. But when you, when you create a price cap, yeah. that eliminates all that. You keep the, 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 the severe criminals in locked up in a cage, and you keep those who commit less serious offenses, they get to come out and get a second chance. Also, to reduce crime, you have to offer prison support services. And what I mean by that is, prisoners need to be educated in order to reduce recidivism. There are two organizations that I believe we should we should uh, fund, the government should fund in order to for prison support services to work. Because there are many prisoners who don't have family. The Bible says, remember prisoners as if you are one of them. By uh, funding prison education services, putting a price cap on the economy, we can reduce crime recidivism. We can reduce crime. People don't have to keep going back and forth to jail because we are we are educating them. We're offering them services so that they can be better. We need more paralegals. The paralegal industry will continue to rise by 33% in the next 10 years. And it's gonna keep going up. The need for paralegals will continue to go up. And a prisoner can get become a paralegal. Or, or with the International Christian College and Seminary, prisoners can learn uh, prisoners can learn uh, about ministry and, and service. So I think we need them to, one, to, to help people make money, the paralegal portion, and one, to offer, uh, to, to encourage them to do service work. I thank you for listening to this testimony, and I'd like to hear your views.